What's up, everybody? Welcome to the latest edition of the Shukri Rights Podcast with your host, Shukri Rights. This guest, I'm honestly, I am genuinely excited to have on because this was someone who I actually was following along for a, for, for a while while he was doing his, his work with WEI, which he just left. He is now currently a producer for, for NPR's WBR station here in Boston. You know the guy. You've seen him around in, in Boston media. Kyrie Thompson of WBR, just formerly of WEI. Kyrie, thank you for coming on the podcast. How are you doing, man? Man, you know, I'm doing all right. Uh, you know, I, I could could be better. I'm actually down in the Midwest right now. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah. So I, I had an uncle pass away. I'm sorry. On Friday. Oh, so so I'm here to, uh, you know, be there for for the family right now. But I'm, mm. I, I, I'll tell you this, man, like I've been looking forward to this for a while. And this is this is like part of a uh, part of me, like, uh, you know, keeping the positive vibes and, and keeping the peace. So, yeah. Um, I mean, I don't mean to bring the the, the mood down or anything, no, but no, I'm, I'm just saying I'm so I'm so happy to be here um, and be here with you and have this conversation, man. Give me a little bit of life today. No, I plan to. But my man, my condolences to you and your family. Like, I'm sorry. I, I, I understand that considering um, like just the recent tragedies that I've that I've gone through in my family. So, like, I fully understand. But it's not to bring the mood down or anything like that. Um, but that but I appreciate you like sharing that with me and like you you definitely have my condolences um and, and and so forth um and you talk about being in the midwest i mean let's face yeah. it it's it's a it's like a completely different world as compared oh, to yeah. boston where where it's like i feel like the midwest is kind of like vanilla in terms of the passion for sports versus the northeast like we we talk the north, you I think of Boston, New York, Philadelphia, those three markets, in particular all three cities I've lived in, and I'm being from New York originally. I know all and well. So, right now, in Boston, I feel like there's a there's a shift happening, mm. both in in terms of sports. You got the Bruins and Celtics right now that are in the midst of their first round series. I mean, both are expected to make deep runs, possibly uh, make it to the finals in their respective sports, the Stanley Cup finals for the Bruins. The Bruins are expected to win the Cup after the season that they just had. And as well as the the Boston Celtics coming up short last year against the Golden State Warriors in the NBA Finals, they're expected to get back to the finals and, and, and win the whole damn thing. Now, as well as the other shift in sports, in Boston sports, that I, that I also want to touch on, I want to start there first. I'm talking about in media because... Mm. In media, what I've what I'm noticing, and this and it just seems to be and like a lot of controversy in like especially in recent months. And I'm talking about between 98.5 the sports up and, and EEI. Those are the two yeah. um sports stations in Boston for those that, that aren't aware with the sports media landscape here in Boston. And as I was following following along, like I don't know what you're doing covering the Patriots, what yeah. you used to do, and so forth. You know, it, and it got me thinking, you being a, a black man, you being a mm-hmm. black man in media in Boston, give give me perspective and as well as to those that are watching and potentially listening to this as well, your thoughts on the overall atmosphere in Boston and the Boston sports media landscape and, and how rare it has been, whether it be whether it be obviously in, in a not so good way and as well as the 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 rarity in terms of hey you you are a man of color working in sports media which is already rare as is but especially in in in, in this market you know so so first first of all I just want to I want to seize on some of you're talking about with the Midwest fandom because I feel like Chicago offers some of the same sort of Mm. sports fandom but i but you know what i would i would say is like boston is like chicago sports fandom with a chip on its shoulder oh. because there's like a there's a similar level of passion but i feel like boston sports people well first of all there's more winning out in boston yeah like let's keep it real right more <laughs> exactly chips more more all that the bulls are kind of kind of carrying the team out there yeah. in terms of franchise and dynasty but i really I, I also do feel like there's a little bit of chicago is a big city mm. boston is a little bit of, of, of a smaller city and a little bit of that like give us our recognition we win like we don't like like we're not over here resting on our laurels chicago new york you know none of that 
So I yeah. feel like there's a little bit of that. But, you know, the, the question that you brought up about being a black man in, in sports media around here, mm-hmm. like, for the most part, it's not something that is overtly smacking you in. Well, like, like not people coming at you. Right. Mm-hmm. It's more the the subtle things like you go to a Patriots practice or you're in the press box and you look around mm-hmm. and there's like. I don't know, a handful of other people that look anything like you. Mm-hmm. And you're just kind of like it. Nobody's making it, you know, like trying to make you realize it, but it's there, right? You can't help yourself. You look exactly. around, it's like, I'm like the only black dude in this room. And there are little things like mm-hmm. I was going into the press room one day. Um, this was in like mini camp or something like that. Um, mm-hmm. in one of the, the, the make kind of makeshift press rooms for for the patriots that they had and i came in with a bunch of other reporters like a handful of other guys all the rest of them are white mm. and i got my press badge on me it's like literally visible oh, on, on, on my front mm-hmm. and a bunch of patriot staffers come up to me and or, or maybe not even should say patriot staffers but like gillette stadium staffers come up to me it's like um like are you lost do you need help like finding your way and i'm like uh mm-hmm. you see this right <laughs> and, 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 and so it's it happens. And then, mm. you know, I, I feel like for the most part, though, I felt pretty accepted and and, you know, the the veterans of the Patriots beat and, you know, just generally Boston sports media have been welcoming to me and you know, have never made me feel yeah. out of place. You do notice it sometimes in the way these athletes are covered. And I was yeah. told this by a media veteran like a couple of years ago before I really start when I was still at WBUR the first time. And they were just like, and somebody that that covered Boston sports for years, it's like, yo, this city doesn't know how to cover black athletes. And I feel like sometimes mm. you can you can see it in the locker room with some of the questions that that are that are asked and the the way that these guys respond to certain media members versus in me, I'm like kind of new, right? But like some of the ways that I would go about talking to them, I felt like they were kind of like, okay, you're cool sort of thing. And that's not to say that none of, none of the other like media members are like, I'm not to say that at all, but it's just, it's different when you are talking to somebody who I think at least there's, there's a, there's an understanding in kind of a fundamental way or even yeah. just little things like at the end of the interview i'd be like appreciate you man and it's like that's the kind of thing that like i don't know you you, you don't always it's a more business like i think with some of the other guys yeah uh which is i mean that's that's perfectly fine i mean i not to say that i'm trying to keep it all unprofessional but for sure there's there's a difference in being who I am and the way that I cover things. And it's not always, people don't always dig it. I had somebody earlier this week, just cause I said Elon Musk was being petty was like, you know, you never really fit into the Boston sports scene. And I was oh, like, fuck. And, 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 and I, you know, and, immediately, and, and, exactly. you know, immediately I'm like, what? The- uh huh. You know exactly oh, what that boy. means. And, and I'm just yeah. like, Oh, do, do tell me more. What no, I, I want to hear you say, what you mean? Say it with your but, whole chest, like yeah. That just pissed me off. I'm not even. I'm not even trying to be entertaining. I'm like nah, because immediately because we both know exactly what that means. So it's like no, no, yeah. no. Say, say it with your whole chest, like say, t- tell us exactly what you what you really mean by that. And, and 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 people have said that when I've been on the air, like one thing, like oh, if, if you if you ever if you ever doing a radio show, you got yeah. the text chat on next to you. Don't look at that thing. I swear to God, don't look at the text chat. It's a cesspool. Mm. And and it's like you would see it sometimes. Like the moment I would get on air, and and Grant, I wasn't the only one that this happened to. Like, but specifically when i get on sometimes people would be like is like oh look at this like woke like political left whatever like kind of discussion i'm like i haven't said anything yet i just sat in the chair i just said hi and i don't even really i don't even really get into that unless it moves me which i mean sometimes it does sometimes i'll say something but for the most part that's not what i do but the fact again my presence and just like me being who i am gets people pissed off sometimes and you can't mm. ignore it like I, again try not to you know overdo it and and like make it sound like i'm like oppressed and this is happening to me also but it's but it's real it happens yeah. it's a real conversation that needs to be had which is why like 
I said, I want to start the conversation. I want to start the podcast talking about it because, listen, I know firsthand, and I have dealt with this a lot on Twitter. I have dealt with this a lot on social media, the bigger that my platforms have gotten. Whereas yeah. I, I've i dealt with racist trolls. I've dealt with, well, what do you know about hockey? Like, <laughs> fuck around and find out. That's mm. really like that's that that's really how I honestly feel. But but in the same token, it's like you can't respond the way that you want to respond. No. At least I can't because along you with your lose. right, you have lose. I have more to lose, and I have way too many um way, way too many members of both media, media outlets at that, and decision makers that are following me on Twitter. And it's like yeah, like I can't respond the way that I want to respond. So. But but what I will do is this. I'll selectively choose when I want to respond and yeah. respond accordingly. So yes. let to let people know that hey, I ain't the one. Y'all not used to me, but y'all gonna get used to me real quick. So when you said that, I'm like, oh, it just it just got it just just lit a fire because it's like yeah, I deal no, with man. it. I deal with it um, like almost on a daily basis to, yeah. on whatever it's on a micro level or on a, or on a major level. But it's just, it's just like, look, when you are, oh, go, go, go ahead, Kyrie. I want, I want, I want you to have the floor and say what you, say what you want to say. No, I mean you're absolutely right. And for me, my way of doing it often, and I had, I had to. You, you got, you got to pick and choose how you want to deal with certain mm -hmm. things. There are other people who are all about clapbacks. For me, yeah. <laughs> I'm a little bit more of like, kind of like you. Sometimes when I hear people say that's happened to them, it pisses me off, and and I and and it, it get it gets my blood boiling. And sometimes yeah. when I see, I'm not gonna lie and say that like when I when I see stuff like that, I don't know exactly what it means because mm -hmm. I do, and I don't want to say something immediately, but because I do. But then I think to myself, you know what? If it's really gonna have me in that kind of mood, then I'm just gonna not feed the trolls, you know, or like. I, it's like it's like you want you want a response out of me like I'll send you like a like a gif or something mm -hmm. you know like like trolling you or something <laughs> like that but but that but that that'll be it that'll that'll be it that's all I'm gonna do because you know what you're not worth my time at the same time it's like I feel what you're saying because you you don't want to make it seem like you you just get disrespected out here all yeah. the time yeah. and that and, and the thing is you know that other people are dealing with the same things like I I've seen it. And so you you want to like you're tempted sometimes to just be like, yo, let me just destroy you right now. And like, like, let, let me just light you on fire. I want to do yeah. it so bad because <laughs> you, well, well, partly because you feel it on behalf of like the other people that are in your position because we don't deserve that. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, like when when that stuff happens, when they come for you for literally just existing mm -hmm. or like. You say or you say something that is like factually correct, but they, they don't want to hear it because keep politics, all the sports and all that. The, I'm, the thing that I tell myself is that's not me that needs to change. It's you. Yeah, I don't I don't need to change. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. I know that I'm doing just fine. You're not knocking me off my path. Mm -hmm. And that's and that's where, like, I think the the growth and understanding of where like uh, where where you are and where you're heading towards com comes in where it's like hey like it I'm not the problem the problem is that you have an issue with the messenger I don't mm -hmm. think it's always the the fact that you have a problem with the message sometimes it's the message yeah especially if you if if you're if you're one I can't handle the truth and I, I I've seen this I feel like in more ways than one Bill Jackson oh my <clears throat> Listen, listen. You, and, you, and you, this, you, 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 you damn near, you dude. damn near nearly had me knock over my camera. Like, yo, hold up. And and this is from a dude who grew up in Chicago, idolizing those. Speak teams. on it. Speak on it, please. I, no, I had, oh, speak, speak I, on this, please. I had, I had the Michael Jordan posters on my wall, bro. Like that was that was the whole thing for me. I stayed up late to watch those teams win championships. I'm like six, seven years old, or whatever. And like you heard some of the like little rumors about it with Scottie Pippen kind of being like, "Oh yeah, I'm not, I'm, I don't got no problem calling Phil a racist." Or like I saw J.R. Ryder like a video back in the wow. day where where he said hmm. like some some of the J.R. Ryder at a Lakers practice about I want to hear about J.R. being on Crenshaw or whatever, and it's like, uh. Ooh, what? Yeah. And then, and then and then there's the LeBron posse comments. 
that right there, when he when he did the LeBron posse comments back in the day, talking about like his entourage, like you know, Rich Paul, Mav Carter, and all that stuff. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. being being around him, guys that they came from came from Cleveland, you know, North Northwest. Yep. And, and he and he was talking about them. That absolutely was like, you know what? I was younger at the time when that was said. I was like in my 20s, but I'm just like, okay, yeah, that ain't it. And so, yeah. like, I've been I've been having a little bit of side eye toward Phil for a minute. And you're tempted to give him the benefit of the doubt because he used to be Mr. Zen Buddhism or whatever. Yeah. But I'm sorry. When the first thing that you mention about why you don't watch basketball and where, yeah, there's the bubble, blah, blah. But, like, when the first thing you keep coming back to is, oh, they have the messages on the court. And they have the messages on the back of the jersey. And you're making fun so of it. Like, ec- like, equality goes to the basket and, like, social justice. But I'm just like, mm, mm, mm. You just told on yourself. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. Yep. Thank you, Phil, for telling me exactly who you are. And it's I prefer that. <laughs> I don't like I don't like my racist hidden. I like them out front. Like ex- exactly. Like tell me, like, show me exactly who you are. Like it, it, because I feel like everything I've talked about in terms of in terms of the question that I posed to you, and as well as the points I brought up in terms of dealing with what I've what I've dealt with on Twitter and especially and especially what I still deal with to this day. Whereas I feel like what people and I and I'm gonna use this particular clip here because I want to deliver a very powerful message. Very, mm. for, for you to hear and for everyone else that's gonna see this on Twitter um at some point in the next 24 hours. I've dealt with a lot of criticism, especially over the last year year now. It's a lot of it's from these racist trolls. And and I'm going to make this very abundantly clear. You don't have too many people that look like me, that look like you, that are doing what we're doing. Especially myself, that, that I built my platform talking about hockey that's a predominantly a white sport. Mm-hmm. So I, I came, it, I came, like the first sport that I covered out here in Boston was baseball. And again, in that room, in the press box, and, and you know, some of it was COVID related, but even when it expanded, mm-hmm. is Julian McWilliams. And like Kyle Hightower comes in there every once in a while, like for the mm. AP. Yeah. And that was it. Wow. Like that. So I mean, I mean, like, yeah, baseball, hockey, like, like all of that. And and I, I feel like and, and again, there's stats on this, right? Sports media is like 82% white. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's hard, it's hard to not talk about that. Especially when you are you come from a BIPOC community. You're you're a person of color. You're a minority, and I and it's important that that that's discussed because I and it was something I've talked about with people in in private, and I won't I won't name drop them for for the sake of um, of their privacy. That there needs to be a lot more of a concerted effort to to in, to have more um, diversity in, in 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 sports media, and it's not only just the Boston problem, but the reason why I'm, I'm I'm talking about Boston because we're both in this city, we're both in this region, and we fully understand like the, the dynamics that 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 are in play on um, when when it, when it comes to this particular matter. Whether people want to get butt hurt about it or not, because I'm talking about it, that's on them. But yeah, I did. I, I posed this question again. This goes. I want to continue off the point I was making initially. You yeah. don't have to, another Shukri Wrights out there right now that's doing what I'm doing. If he's out there, I'd love to meet him and collaborate with him. But there, but there isn't as far as I'm aware of. That's number one. Number two, when you're creating content and you're doing what I'm doing, what you're doing radio, you're doing podcasts, hell, mm-hmm. I do commentating on ESPN Plus, and, 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 and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, the list goes on. I realized, and I had to realize this, that the the more that you do, the bigger the target that you're going to have on your back. And I yeah. didn't understand this at first. And, and the time that it finally dawned on me was the day that someone messaged me in private and said, you know, it was I think it was right around the time of the NBA Finals last year, someone messaged me and said, hey, shoot, you got, you got to impersonate it. I'm like, what are you talking about? And they showed me exactly who it was. Uh-huh. Yeah. And yeah, because they because they, they came for me. Wow. Yeah. The, the, the impersonator. Yeah. yeah and the I was impersonator. Like, yeah. And, I, and I was like, oh, wow. And initially, I was pissed off. But now I, I look back on it and I'm like, sounds like um impersonating me and trolling me and trying to like talk to people that I also know 
and 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 do some real nasty things is working out quite well with you because you're still in the same position that you're in now. So <laughs> I say all of that in in conclusion. The more that you do and the more that you put out there, the more they're going to come. And Triple H, said, I really said it best, and I'm paraphrasing this quote. If if you're not if you're not making moves and you ain't got haters, you haven't really accomplished it. I'm just paraphrasing what he said. But a plus for life as well. If you're if you're not having people that are that 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 are that are hating on on you because of what you do, et cetera, et cetera, then you're not really like creating waves. You're just not. And that's just that's just the way I I I look at it, you know. And you know, it, it's funny because there was a moment like that for me when I <laughs> I, I forget what site it, it is, um, but they were like putting together like a like a March Madness style tournament of the like Boston sports writers oh, that they gosh. hated the most or whatever. <laughs> and like I made the bracket and I was just like, all right. <laughs> you gotta Unfortunately, be Unfortunately, I went up against one of my really good friends who's a, who's a great journalist, um, and and he smoked me in the first round. So apparently, wow. apparently, I'm not that good. Uh, but but it's like one of those deals where it's like, yeah, I'm I'm on the, I I am, well known enough to right. be to be hated and looped in with like some of the worst guys out there. Oh my mm. god! And the people coming at me like, you know. It's like you work at EEI and it's going to like kill your career and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just kind of like, look, I'm just over here trying to do my thing. You know, yeah. I'm not I'm not trying to get involved in, in all that. But, yeah, I, I think that, you know, ultimately the more, yeah, as you said, the more you're known and the more that you can't please everybody. You can't. Right. Yeah. And and I mean, the, the thing that you got to remember sometimes is that there's a lot more support out there than there is dissension. But That's I was talking about point. this. I was talking about this with my dad in regards to like, you know, like the family things, right? Like I mentioned, you know, I'm out here, you know, for a pretty sad family event and like talking through family dynamics and things. And it's, I just said to him, you know, it's funny how you remember the negative things the most. There's so many other, there's so many other positive things overwhelmingly, but the negative things are the ones that you hold on to because they they take they take you off the ledge right they or rather they, they take you off the pedestal yeah. and they get you thinking about what you're not what you're not good at and there's a way to to think about those things in terms of you know I want to keep on getting even better but if you keep on thinking about that part it can wear you down i am yes. somebody that i'm not even going to lie like i'm somebody that is like a deeply perfectionist kind of person i worry a lot about telling stories the right way and and being true to the people that that I'm that I'm speaking with, right? That matters a lot to me. Yeah. So when somebody tells me like that I my work is worthless and stuff like that, there's obviously the rational part that comes in where I'm just like, I'm not gonna listen to you. What the fuck are you talking about? You like are. you can't you can't tell me nothing. <laughs> but but there's yeah. that part of me that is affected and is thinking like, you know what, man? Like I just. I don't even know if I want to keep doing this work anymore. This is like it 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 beats you down. And I got that. Yeah. And and it is it is a daily struggle to to just keep doing it every single day and to remember that you are important, you do matter, and somebody out there whether you know it's they're going to DM you about it or they see you in person or what have you but somebody out there finds value in in what you're doing aside from just you and aside yeah. from your employer mm -hmm. and hearing that kind of stuff like always does in in the low moments you can look back at that and saying like you know what keep doing what you're doing it matters so much for me to see somebody like you on TV like on NBC Sports Boston mm -hmm. right or for you to hear you on the air doing your thing because it makes me think I could do it too it, it 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 does make a world of a difference. Um, I remember, it was just recently. Um, someone reached out, um, to me, um, on Twitter and was like, "Hey, um, I I have a son who really looks up to you." And I'm like, "What?" Yeah, that's crazy. It which blows my mind. Crazy. I Kyrie, I could send you just like, just like just to give you an idea. Like, listen, I'm not making this shit up at all. Like, no, I've. Have people either email me, DM me, 
And they're like, yo, like I really admire the content you're putting out there. And I, and I really appreciate what, like what you're doing. And I have a son who is a big fan of, he sees your videos on TikTok, blah, blah, blah. And, and it's like, I'm sorry, who? It can't be me because <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. over here doing my own thing, my, my own business. Like, hold up, they can't be me. Um, and it, you know, it do, it does mean a lot. But it's like, yo, like, the, the, sometimes, sometimes you 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 forget what you do, and you said it so perfectly that what you do does matter, and that there is a lot more supporters than there are haters, and what's What's amazing about you saying that is that I went to Kowloon's, believe it was February, if memory, if memory serves me correct, I believe it was February. It was February. And I'm and I'm really good friends with the with the owner, um, Mr. Andy Wong. Shout out to the mm-hmm. Wong family. Like they're 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 really phenomenal. Love you, man. And him and I had a a, a, a private conversation. The, but the only detail that I will share with, with you is this: He said something to me. He's like, "Listen, you have a lot more people who truly love you and and truly love what you do, and you don't understand the impact that you're having." Like, yeah. and 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 when he said that, I I didn't show it initially, but it was like, I mean, this is this is someone that is legendary in the Boston uh, metro Boston community and obviously his, his family has been well known for 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 over 60 plus years obviously it's, lo- it's way more than that but but we're talking about for at least a good couple of generations this it, it, he, like, this is a well known man a well respected man and who has deep ties also with with Boston sports personalities and as well as getting the well known in the WWE um, universe whenever WWE will come to Boston and so forth. So for him to say that, it was like, and he and he is, is also one of my biggest supporters. And it was just like, yo, there really is a lot more people who who do love or appreciate what you do than those that are like hateful or, or for whatever reason and it doesn't even matter you, but you appreciate those that are like, yo, like you're, you're, what you're doing, man, is you're, you're killing it out there. And and I think it's so cool that, that I'm sharing this moment with you because, yeah, you look, because you look like me, and I and I can't emphasize for those that may not understand why that matters is because when you are a person of color, you're not expected to to survive, not just survive, but but thrive in any walk of life. It doesn't. And it's not only just media. Well, you're not expected to be a doctor. You're not expected to be a politician. You're not expected to be a judge. You're not expected to be a cop. You're not expected to succeed. And when you do succeed and you and you do extremely well in whatever realm that it is, and it's not only just in terms of sports, it's as if you're looked upon you as if you are a unicorn, if you will. You understand yeah. that. Yes. And and you're looked at as, as a unicorn. And some people look at it, there are a couple of different ways that that, that, that cuts, because some mm-hmm. people are saying like, man, that's awesome that, you know, you're, uh, you know, somebody that, that people could look up to, but then other people are like, you see, he can do it. So that means that that all the rest of you are like, you're just lazy, right? You're just like, you nailed just, it. Like, yep. Yeah. And, and it's like, there's a problem with you. Look at, look at this one. He's one of the good ones. Cause I grew up in that kind of I grew up in that kind of setting. Where I grew up in Northwest Indiana, and I mean, like they're they're definitely Chicago like, land, right? Black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, I grew up in Hobart, Indiana, largely. So it's right, it's by Gary, which is very black. Merrillville, which is also has a, a big time black population, but Hobart, just across like the you know, the the I sixty five, you know, expressway, wow. not so much. And and you know, it, it's definitely more white suburban, and so. I definitely like I went to like private schools and stuff like that growing up and where like I was literally the only black kid in the school. Wow. There was not one up until like I was about to graduate. And then like, you know, some a kid and his um, you know, younger sister who was actually um, you know, my my youngest brother's age. Mm. Like they were like in similar classes together. Like up until then, not a single one. And wow. I had all kinds of run it, like, like people, you know saying all kind of wild stuff to me, man. And like teachers looking at like literally like doing the angry kid stereotype on oh, me. 
and and dealing with that all the time. It's so tiring. But you know, you're pointed at as, oh yeah, well, and, and even within my family, which I mean, there's a lot of dynamics there at play. Like I don't want to get into all that, but mm -hmm. it's very much like you see him, see what he's doing. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like you know none none of the none of those other ones can can do that Prince. you know and and you're and you're just like Dude, but that's that's just so wrong, so wrong. yeah and, and then and then i'm like working with kids uh like on martin luther king drive in chicago you know uh which is like just off the university of chicago campus it's like it's wild how quickly like you get the university of chicago campus and then everything around it is real black and so, like, you work with some of these kids who are, like, blocks away from one of the most prestigious universities in the world, and they have no contact with that. It's it's insane. And so, like, I'm going and working with these kids, and, like, some of them were, like, rough. Like, and, and, and I mean, just don't want to listen to nobody and, and like, just, just being just combative about everything. Mm -hmm. And you think to yourself, the more you spend time with them, like, man, this kid could really be something. And I I want to be part of that. When when he gets to to you know, realizing what he can do, and he and he doesn't even believe it himself because you know, I was working in an all boys program. Yeah. So yeah. it's just just a just a bunch of black boys, man. And and they it took them a, it took me a while to earn their respect mm. and and to have them level with me. But man, at the end of it, I was just like, I want to do this every single semester. It's like I'm a college student at the time. You know, it's like, I, I want to do this all the time yeah. because I want, I want them to be me. And the thing is, everybody thinks they can't, but they can. Mm -hmm. You just have to put in the time and the effort to helping them get there. Absolutely. So no, that's, that is hugely in, in, important to me. Like I never, I hate it every single time somebody's, you know, try, tries to put you on a pedestal and, and be like, you know, well, if you can't do that, then then that's just because, uh, you know, you're lazy or like there's something wrong with you or mm -hmm. like you come from a, you know, broken home or whatever. It's like I didn't come from no perfect home, at least not in the beginning. You know, I, I'm much more lucky than than a lot of other people would have been in my situation. But it's like, I don't know, man, like it that that's a hugely important thing to me. And so I don't take it lightly being where I am doing what I do. Uh, absolutely. And. I th and that that last part there about not taking anything for granted, giving like doing what you do. I think that in itself is is really important because I I at first didn't really understand like just how tough of a industry just to even start is. Oh, yeah. And I got I'm saving this for for part two of the podcast, which is just coming up in just in just a few moments. But oh man, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna save I'm gonna save that story for part two, which is gonna start. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna end part one now, and yeah. Then start start part two because there is there is a story I actually want to share. I talked about it on a solo episode where it was just me, kind of in a way, but not really get into like the 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 story as to how I even started. And yeah. I want, and I really want to pull the curtain back a little bit, and Let's do it. And, and and maybe there are some aspects of my story that you could possibly also relate to as well. So yeah. we're gonna end part one now. Part two is coming up next. Don't don't go anywhere for those of you that are watching on YouTube and as well as um those of you listening on iHeartRadio and wherever you get the podcast as well.